These interviews in no way reflect the views of Arrayus Productions. This project is in no way endorsed by Arrayus Productions. As students in a continuous state of learning and frequency accretion, we each hold our own unique perspective of the teachings and how they relate to our individual experiences. It is important for viewers to remember that we are in fact self-sovereign beings with free will expression and we each carry our own perceptual filters with potential for distortion. These interviews are intended to inspire and in no way should reflect upon Iesha, Aureus Productions, or any of her work, as there is no affiliation. More information on the Alhumbra Magistracy Council of Cosmenius, the Melchizedek Cloister Emerald Order, Tantriora, Tantriasia, and the Kelantic Science can be found in the provided links below. external creation. There is like an energetic tunnel that links us to a different place called internal creation. Tunnel's opening. When the tunnel opens, kind of there's a little in-between space created, um, and internal and external creation kind of start to merge there. And when they start to merge, this stuff called illumine air um, starts to form, and this illumine air kind of realigns our molecules and everything else so that we become much more eternal in our um, orientation, and then gradually we're just going to kind of like pop into that internal creation through that through that little tunnel thing that got activated. And the so, 900 years thing is happening right now. Is that it? Is that the understanding? I don't know. Like I didn't. I don't remember. I mean, maybe it's in there. Some it's in that update somewhere. I know Ian's been talking about the 900 years is happening now or something, and I'm like. I don't remember that from the update, but, you know, maybe it's in there. I just didn't register in my brain. But, um, you know, at this point, Chris, I cannot take the Guardians when they're making a schedule seriously for my for the life of me. Like, they'll say, oh, this is happening then, and this is happening, you know, 900 years, and this will happen in 20 minutes. And I'm like, I, do, I, I, do, I just don't believe them anymore. So it'll happen when it happens. Um, who knows when? But it'll happen when it happens. So. Okay. Yeah. You don't believe them anymore? Like it's well, not I believe them. I just cannot for the life of me believe them when they're saying it will take it will happen at this time. Okay. This, the guardian just, time thing. <laughs> yeah. Well yeah. this is guardian time. Like, is it gonna happen in twenty minutes or is it gonna happen in nine hundred years, guys? Like Yeah. What's gonna happen? So I cannot I, I I say I think the grad it's like something like that will happen as for when <clears throat> I'm going to, I would bet against it happening in the ne next 15 minutes, but you know, after that, I don't know. So, um, it'll happen eventually. I mean, who knows when, but it'll happen eventually. And what really? will happen? Like we're, we're all going to pop through or is this theoretically because we're all on the planet, the spaceship earth thing, just traveling, yeah. going, that's the, that's the kind of idea. It's interesting. I've, I've, I've like, I did a trituration. So for those of you who don't know, I do a lot of homeopathic triturations and trituration is when you take a substance and you grind it up with milk sugar for however many hours. Um, I do 12. Um, the, the standard is about three or four. Um, and so I get a lot of information about the healing properties of this substance and um, kind of I experience it myself. And I did one in 2014 and I'd previously done, you know, substances that had a lot to do with plasma. I did Lotus, which had a lot to do with plasma and so forth. And I came up with this like idea. There was this, when you aligned all the energy bodies. So I, I let me explain this more concretely. I did one, um, trituration of sandalwood, sandalum album. And I, and I'm a naturopathic doctor, by the way, not that this reflects my practice or any way, that's just, you know, my job and my calling and my career and my passion. So, um, basically when I use Latin names, it's cause that's how I learned them. So Santalum album, it's an herb, it's, you know, sandalwood, it's very sacred in India and so forth. Lots of uses I love for sandalwood. it. Yeah. Oh, it's a lovely thing. So anyway, sandalwood 
at the C12 level after me having triturated it for 12 levels and kind of come to appreciate, to find its original imprint on earth. Um, it's, you know, kind of original Christic idea for being here on earth. It's whole thing was you aligned all the energy bodies together and then this stuff, and I called it luminosity. Notice the name is very similar. Um, uh, it starts to kind of appear and radiate out into the world around you and everything else like that. And your atoms will gradually shift in and out of alignment. And each time they'll bring a little bit more of this luminosity in with it. And I did this in 2014. And then I kind of read through um, the December 16th thing. I'm like, wait, what? Did I talk about the same thing two years ago or not even two years ago? It was like early 2014. So like, did I talk about the same thing three years ago? I don't know if I did or not, but I gave it, I gave it almost the exact same, like luminosity versus illuminaire. There's, yeah. And well, so then people have been posting like the, that movie. Uh, what was it called? Mo, Moab or something? Moali about the mm -hmm. Hawaiian shaman. And like, oh, there yeah. must be references in that too. Have you seen the posts on that? Uh, yeah. No. Okay. But anyway, I was like, that's, that's interesting. And it's part of the book that I'm going to be releasing, you know, as soon as my, I've got another editor. So as soon as they're get done with it. So it's like, here it is. If you, this is my book. I'm going to shamelessly plug here. It's not released yet, but it will be as soon as it's done. What's the name of it again? It is A New Era, Homeopathy and the Human Spirit. Dr. Palterio. So the title. it's going to be all it. encompassing. Yeah. yeah, I know. It's Well, it's a reference to some other things in homeopathy. If you want to, we can do an interview about that book when it's out and stuff. But, yeah. you know, yeah. 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 But yeah, I know. So anyway, that's kind of what's going on with that. And that is an interesting, like, you know, and apparently there's a set of activations that will occur like end of January, early February and so forth. Um, I will say, I will say I accept, you know, something that's that near in the future. I generally accept the Guardian's timelines on. So it's like it's happening end of January. Or, OK, probably happening around then. That's, you know, less than a month. They're usually OK. Um so yeah, no, that's kind of, and there's this large activation and kind of those, um, those, the final sets of those activations initiate around that point. So the, the opening of the tunnel kind of thing that I was describing. So anyway, um, yeah. So there wasn't much dates given. I haven't read, I haven't like digested the entire update right now. I've kind of skimmed through it, but what was, Rough. was there any new dates or anything? Rough, you know, the literally the end of January, early February, all those tunnel kind of components open up. Like yeah. t time tunnel stuff, or what is it? Literally a tunnel from, from us where we are now to um, to that kind of internal creation, and not even internal. Like there's internal creation that's a bit more localized to our space time realm. Realm there's like a special extra eternal internal creation um, kind of um, a thing. I, I need a map to show you, but like super nice place. Anyway, so yeah. Wow. It's like way in the future, like median Earth stuff, Andromeda. I tend, I tend not to think in terms of like, I tend to in my mind, I've, in my mind, I've separated out kind of like our universe from like other ones. So I tend not to think in terms of like Andromeda or anything else like that. I know many people in chaos do. I, I just don't. So, yeah, I tend to think of our universe as like a separate little spot. And, you know, all that we can see the visible universe that we know of as like a separate like spot that's kind of distinctly removed from the other places we're talking about. So, yeah. It's a little unorthodox. But it is like it's different galaxy, though. I mean, I mean, the solar system is going to be around us the Milky Way, everything. You feel in that? You feel in like all the planets are going to disappear around us and different system stuff? Maybe there's versions of them on a, in this other place we're going to. Yeah, right. Maybe we might not even notice the difference. Okay. So, so, so the the Trump thing, like, what's what's your take on all this after? All right. It's good that you brought this up. This is, I will say, actually, of all the people, it's funny. I don't have a lot of animosity towards po political people in general. There's some people I don't like specifically. Like I must admit I've got it in for Putin. I think he's a reasonable and nice enough guy, but the, you know, I'm gay. Him and the gays, not a lot of, there's not a lot of niceness going on there. Russia. Yeah. 
So um, anyway, Ro it actually comes down to um, kind of Rose's interview a lot. There's, there's an internal linkage there, even though she very consciously specifically didn't talk about that. Um, so anyway, Rose's, a great deal of Rose's interview was focusing kind of on that split period that, that, you know, late 2011 to, you know, May 20, May and June 2012 kind of period when, um, you know, the kind of work, the, the organization of the work that as we'd known it up to that point kind of fell apart. The interesting thing is this isn't the first split that happened. There have been three, three that I know about and maybe like a mini one that happened a little bit earlier. First one happened in about like, like August to October of 2000, as far as I've been able to, to reconstruct it. So around that time is when, so before then, Eisha was married to Philip Gruber, um, who wrote the introduction to Voyagers 2, or not the introduction, there's like a little preamble to Voyagers 2, and he wrote that. Um, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Yep. No, no, she's married to him at that point. Um, Did he do any... It was like probably too early for the codes, I think. He, he didn't yeah. do any of the codes or anything? No, not too much. Okay. Um, if you look at some of the earlier work that I have, though, you can see like a lot of, she invited a lot of different people to speak. She invited some like conspiracy theorists and some other people. And there's one really good workshop like in December 1999, right before they did the um, the, the kind of stand that led, for D, led to D12 being anchored on the planet. So it was like December 12th, 1999 or something where they, she brought in a bunch of people and they all went and did a thing and then did ordinations and then they did grid work and everything. So it seemed lovely. Um, so basically at that point, there was a group set up called Ome Da, and um, it's kind of a reference to the, one of the first um, songs that she had, you know, like, like Ome Da, I Patuma, that one. Um, so she, they set that up, and oddly enough, you know what happened? People started fighting and hating each other and all sorts of things, and there's lots of bickering and everything else. And then um, Marianne Calloway kind of set up the, the KSE group, the, the more official one, right around the same. And then there was kind of like a number of people who left right around the same, right around this like August to October period who like thought Yesha was, they all of a sudden, you know, they used to be good followers over her. Then all of a sudden they're like, oh my God, she's so on it, integrity. She has no integrity, blah, 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 blah. And then she gets divorced and then remarries Aeson really quickly all in this like three month period. So. That's number one. Um, that kind of, and it's, that one's interesting because not very many people are around, like I wasn't around for that. Like I, you know, encountered KS in 2002, but um, I know a few people who were, and there is actually, an, I, I can get you a text document about a guy who's like, he seemed a little mentally unbalanced. His name is Daniel. And he, um, I mean, I, it seemed that way to me. I don't know. I'm not diagnosing him. But he got this whole series of outlines of, of like an announcement that she made on the Ome Dog group. And then it's like his rather nasty replies to it and so forth. Um, so there was a lot of that. Like it's, and it, I find it quite interesting because um, that event was like the almost exact parallel of the 20. 11, 12, like it's the same thing happened, except, you know, different divorce, different guy move, different new guy, um, different tone in the work and everything. And it's quite funny. So after that's when Asan comes into the work, um, who later became speaker too. And then um, after the, that, the work kind of, and that's a right around the period of the Treaty of, Al, of Altair being broken. And right after that, the work takes on a very, it takes on a darker hue before that, you know, and from 98 to 2000, the work was quite bright and happy. And it was very, I will use the word ecumenical. So it was all about kind of bringing the new age movement together. It's like in one of her early workshops, Iesha cited Dranvalo Melchizedek as a source of information. She's like, yeah, this is a good work. I think it was Indigo Children, one of the early manuals. She did cite him as like, you know, there's information on Indigo Children in this guy's workshops and manuals and things. I, I forget which, I forget the exact wording, but, you know, there was a very ecumenical spirit in her work then. She drew upon other authors and, you know, invited other people to speak and, you know, spoke well of other people, those of much of the rest of the New Age movement and so forth. And then after that, just after 2000s, like, that's out the window and it all becomes about kind of the exposure. The Us exposure. versus them stuff, pretty much. Yeah, it became very much like that. 
there, it became a lot about the Metatronic agenda and um, the various mechanics of that and so forth. And this has always been a very interesting point to me. Um, there was an email she released in like June 2012 defining fatally and dark flowering and so forth back when the, the Google group was work, was active and so forth. I mean, maybe it is still active. I, I could log in. I haven't been home in like years. But um, back when that was a thing. And then um, she would just answered a few questions a couple times. Online, and we're all like, oh, my God, we get to talk to her. Yay. And I still, yeah, that was that was actually an awesome little bit. But anyway, she defined that dark flowering on core personnel. So core personnel for the dark flowering agenda began in 1999. So it was like, hmm, there's, there's like a weird intersection of like what was going on then in that so weird little narrow that. period. Core personnel or, for dark core flowering. Core personnel for the dark flowering agenda for kind of the fatally agenda, if you want to call it that, um, began in 1999, according to that that little um, verbal thing or that little email thing that she gave out during the, the in June, 2012 on the, on the Google group. This is from uh, her, like she said that. From oh. her directly. Okay. So. Completely anyway. missed the 1999. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm good at this. So anyway, um, anyway, so they go on with this kind of Metatronic exposure agenda. The flame body work comes in. Um, ASON does bring in a lot of codes, like the Mahadra Drana code. Like if anyone remembers that, it's like this really complicated circle-y thing. Um, it's a terrible description of it, isn't it? That <laughs> has like every VECA code in it, right? I know. Isn't that that horrible description? It's like this really complicated circle thing. You just dissed every single VECA code ever made. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm sorry. I did not just mean Just in one statement. That's like, just a uh, terrible description of it. I acknowledge it's uh, a beautiful and very important and lovely code but i i can't i can't turn that into words yeah. <laughs> didn't it work with so, the blood sorry, i drive it no one salt so oh. anyway um, okay wasn't it like for the blood like the, actual, the physical blood or something it had something to do with working with the blood or? that was a different one it's a different one okay that was a different one. um so anyway um he brought that in and they kind of do that he was and using then that dad, right he was a draftsman and I don't know he's good. He did a couple of really like you know if you ever see that code or a color version of it, like it's like, whoa, it's complicated. Yeah. So I'm um, good on him for that. And then um, that basic strand of the work, and that was still all about kind of getting to the bridge zone. So the bridge zone was basically they were going to raise Earth's kind of uh, frequency a little bit, as naturally would happen in the stellar activation cycle, and then they were going to keep it from falling all the way. And that whoever could make that ru and then keep it in like this little artificial time continuum thing that they were going to build, like artificial, not in the sense of unnatural, but artificial in the sense it probably would have sunk back. Earth probably would have sunk back to our density one. So they would have just kept it kind of a little bit elevated. So, you know, nasty forces couldn't interfere with it. That was the bridge zone project. And the early work was all about, you know, getting that happening and doing the grid work for that to occur. Real, real quick, wasn't it based off of like linking us to Terra? And, yep. But if Terra has already fallen, like, isn't nope, no, no, we're part Terra's of like Terra? Yeah, like, Terra was not fallen yet. So, you know, that and that gets complicated. So. Yeah, because the beginning of Voyagers describes like Terra, like we fell from Terra, like yeah. there's pieces of Terra everywhere, right? And that's the thing. It's like, I do, like, I remember Earth before Terra. I remember Terra, like, there's a part of Terra and Earth. Absolutely. There's an energetic connection there. But I remember Earth before Terra, and there, there was not Earth before Terra. Like, I was here, I was there. It was, I, I saw the Terra thing happen and I was like, oh God, another thing to deal with. So it was not something I was terribly happy about. Um, so anyway, aside. So um, anyway, so eventually the goal of the bridge zone is we would just much more quickly merge into Terra than would otherwise occur. So that was the goal. Until 2005, yeah. when Terra got all messed up, like Terra kind of, you know, fell reversed frequencies, and then a bunch of other stuff happened that made that vertical ascension thing relatively difficult. That was fall two. That was kind of split two. A lot of people just, Morocco happened, you know, Demon Fest happened. There was apparently a lot of possessions and a lot of influencing going on, and a lot of people started getting really nasty to each other and not talking to each other because, you know, oh my god, that person's possessed. Oh my god, that person's a dark avatar. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And yeah. she actually mentioned that that's when they were instructed, like, to move from, uh, from 
from the UK, like over to back to the States, yeah. like right back after Morocco, Arizona, Colorado or somewhere. Colorado, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's what happened then. So like it got yeah. too bad over there. The grids or I don't, well, I don't know what happened. I, I, like, I have no idea what was going on in Britain, you know, go and talk to Sue Clemson. She would know, or Sue, Sue or Noel would know. Yeah. I wouldn't know. Cause you know, I've never been to Britain. Uh, you know, anyway, Demon so, Fest, huh? like Morocco. I've, I've, the... ne I've never been there either. So, Okay. Yeah, I've I've really only I've only only been within North America, and the furthest away I've been was Barbados, which, by the way, highly recommend. Barbados is lovely. So, um, anyway, so that's kind of Split Two, and then after Split Two, again the thing changes completely. So, like the work changes like even more radically than it changed after the first split. After Split Two, it goes into the Mashiahana thing, which is Mashiahana. Ascension is not about like zzz, 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 going straight up, like, you know, raising your to, from dimension one to two to three to four to five. Da, 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 da. It's about embodying all the dimensions immediately and then using that transpiration to completely transfigure your body and spirit and then kind of achieving like a, a super, you know, kind of literally popping out of this universe and then going on into the next phase in our evolution. So it was it's quite a much more advanced process so it's like we immediately it's like all right before we were going to like oh right we're going to go up and up and up and up and up and you know gradually get to back to you know god source and then after it split two it's like no we're going to embody all dimensions all the frequencies right now and then we're going to go and go through the transformation process again i mean not like right now but like really 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 fast historically speaking and so forth and that was basically the work from 2004 six ish to about late 2011 that was the work and then um the two right. yeah that was slide sliders essentially and some of the prequels to sliders and things like that so then um on top of that and then after that um there's the 2012 split which you know frankly i have no additional information to offer like I, I wasn't there. I don't know anyone who's there. No. So, and that, and then after that, there becomes this whole thing about fail safe, which is about, there's almost an escapist portion to it. It's about going to internal creation. No, I suppose there's an escapist portion. Por never mind that. There's, it's about getting well, to the internal. evac thing during so, sliders was pretty escapism. I think uh, it was probably the yeah. peak of escapism. You're, no, you're right. You're right. That was silly of me to say that was, never mind. That was brain. That was a brain fart. So anyway, it's about becoming, it's about, you know, going to internal creation and so forth. And a lot of the Mashiachana stuff, like there's a subtext of it, but it hasn't been made explicit. It was, it was made explicit in KDL, DDL too. And we were told, you know, we're going to be going through all these, like, you know, the embodiment of the, um, of those kind of, you know, Mashiachana frequencies. We're going to be going and completing each of those Adashi return frequency, um, you know, the attainment things in body. And frankly, I think that's still needed. I still think we need to go through all that Adashi return stuff in order to get to internal creation. So that is, and I, sh I don't think she's explicitly mentioned that yet, but I think that's true. I think we still have to go through the Adashi return process and not, we just won't have to go to like another universe to do it. We won't have to go to another domain, um, you know, kind of, and do the long way. We will just be like calling in the frequencies and doing the Adashi return transformation, like, you know, we, like, you know, in a journey or whatever. So that's my opinion on that. I still need to study the Adashi return stuff. I haven't delved into that yet. I fell in love with stuff. Like, I really love that stuff. The Adashi return stuff is just like, I fell in love with it. So, you can imagine I've been just a tad frustrated. It's like uh, any, I remember in sliders in, or in sliders in KDDL three, she's like, all right, I'm going to come back in a week and we're going to do the embodiment of, of Adashi one, the silver sheet thing. Here we are about 18 months later. And I'm like, can we do that? I'd really like to do that. So, um, we'll see we, have <laughs> we have an update. Yeah, we got a couple updates. Um, Go more into the update. What else is there? The thing was packed. Like there has to be a lot more to this. What else? Oh, there totally is. And you know, that is what I've extracted from it now. It is a very complex document energetically and conceptually. So that's where I'm at with it right now. So I'm not going to deny that there's, there's a ton more in there, okay. but I probably, that is where, where I'm at with it right now. So you're, so. you're not reading into this, 
being the 900 years happening right now thing like some i've heard that from a couple of chaosers Yen made a post on that a little while ago and i don't know where he's gotten that from um you know i like Ian, nice guy despite his little him, him and my little tiff you know the other the other um day on indigos um but you know I, I don't know where he gets some of his stuff from and maybe it is his own personal ideas or his own personal transmissions or something like i can't tell you whether they're right or wrong or anything i'm just like he's saying right now it's happening right now and i'm like all right then so and uh, there's a there's a habit in KS for people to really start thinking ahead of themselves. Like I remember right after the December 2012 workshop when we kind of announced that when we kind of we kind of discovered that the net was going to start slowly eroding and everything else and um, that you know Earth would be returned to kind of a cristic planet status and so forth. I remember I was chatting with one guy and he was like, "Oh Paul, I feel it. The net is down right now." I'm like, "Is it?" Are you able to levitate an orb and, you know, pop in and out and, you know, kind of pop in and out of this reality and so forth? Obviously, he's like, no. He's like, are people growing scales and tails and kind of getting all sorts of much more diverse body forms because the net's not holding the common human mutation in place? He's like, no. Like, but I'm pretty sure it's up. So, um, yeah. So that's kind of my that's kind of my my thing about that. Um, it's kind of like I, I still do have that very practical. I mean medicine did this for me and you know medicine is very much part of my role like it's very much i swear to god it's part of my shield contract like that very practically mindedness is very much it's very much part of my my kind of training and my my role within you know the crystal river post or whatever like yeah. that and that practical thinking there it's really easy for i think a lot of people within chaos to kind of get caught off in a thought storm and then just go like and float off and have no contact with reality and so forth but i'm like my my reality thing is like oh no okay what is actually happening it's, it's like the natural I, grounding the field oh yeah, to be no. in. So working with people and seeing issues and things yeah yeah it's it's funny too because i had this conversation with several people um there's a number of people who are like oh chaos it's wonderfully healing and, I'm, and me just being a shit disturber i'm like really it's healing because you know i have my own health problems i have um I had tinea, uh, like not, nothing serious. I have tinea versicolor, which is just a topical skin infection and uh, a, a topical skin fungal infection. And um, yeah, no, it's not altered in any way from you know KS or anything else like that. It did alter under the treatment of some naturopathic treatment I was taking, but it hasn't really altered with KS. And so I'm like, okay, this is kind of a thing. And so you know, we got into this conversation on Indigos one day, and there were people like, oh, it's healing me, it's healing me. I'm like, me medically trained I'm like how what happened what was happening before what was happening after and so a couple of people like um what's his name what's her name that nice that nice korean girl that ian's that ian is like Ari, his tongue Ari. thank Ari. you Ari. rishi she Ari rishi. was Ari rishi that's who it is so we we were talking on and you know she was you know gave me she said it healed her and a little bit and i asked for details and she didn't give me any and so forth. And then um, I think Devana Shanti was also like, oh yeah, no, it totally healed me. I'm like, Devana, would you please do this? And she's like, didn't even respond. And then with all people, it was Nancy Rubeck who actually volunteered with her, with her health information. And I will not betray her health information in any way that trust is sacred, but she did. She's not my patient, so I'm not betraying her trust. But she told me, you know, this is what happened to me and my experiences and so forth of healing with chaos. And she described it and she was really in detail and she responded to my quite like, you know, me, I'm like questions, 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 what exactly happened, what were you experiencing and so forth. And so, and so she was literally out of like however many people are in the shield, the one person who responded to me and with a story about, you know, her healing and chaos. She's, she's got some big testimonies. Yeah, for sure. No, I, Nancy's such a lovely person. I love her. So anyway, um, so anyway, that was just, I found that pretty, um, I found that pretty weird, actually. So anyway, and I will, you know, my opinion, so chaos at the moment, from what I've talked to many people, not just Nancy, but many people, myself included, does not seem to be a big physical healing thing. And as a naturopathic doctor, that puzzles me. It's like this big infusion of energy. Something might be happening. But 
so far it doesn't seem to have been um, that kind of a thing. That was so, interesting what Rose said too. Like after a decade of doing these techniques, we should be healed. We should we should already healed some of these well, things, these so e great. basic like, ego things. And, yeah. I know it's like all this basic. I literally like I'm still a bitch. Like I know I'm not looking to blaming chaos for me still having my personality quirks or anything. And you know, frankly, I probably could stop acting this way if I really wanted to, but I. <laughs> So um, I actually, you know, this is the way I act and this is the way, and, you know, I'm not going to kind of, I have my own personal history as for why I'm not going to change that. Yeah. But, you know, um, so anyway, that's kind of that. So I'm just kind of like, yeah, no. And we well, hang on to things for my choice. I think, I don't know. Yeah. I'm always going back to the blending thing. If we really are doing this line of work, we've got to be, we do have to be grounded and we have to be able to talk well, and function there here. to be authenticity too like yeah. if you are legitimately angry or sad or happy or you just don't want to fucking take that do that like covering it up with sing with like covering it up with being as my one of my friends says e an easha clone kind of like or easha clone like parroting everything she says and you know just getting into this like happy 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 but like not practical yeah with doing is not going to help you or anyone else like you're not being authentic to who you truly are you're not even living your true life what's that going to do for anyone like anyway i think an authentic bitch is a lot better work or is a lot shall we say and a more authentic as more a thorough frequency holder for the crystal river host than an inauthentic saint i'm just saying yeah no i hear you i know no. that's pretty rampant so in the group yeah. it needs to be called no. out it needs to be talked about period. anyway <laughs> those are the three those so anyway back to our original question those are the three um splits rose and, and noel and who i you know i love rose and noel they're just so nice and kind and wonderful um so i didn't know i thought like really when talking to noel i would have pegged him on the green shield or something like that so um and anyway apparently according to rose they were kind of central on the violet, violet shield and the holding of that i do not have a great connection to the violet shield so i have a really good connection to two shields green and blue so i have a lot of both of those in my in my um kind of my own frequency coding so i don't know if i have a, like a specific spot or something like i don't know if like shit disturber bitch princess is a formal position in one of those shields but um yeah no i don't know if i got a formal spot or something but that's kind of like where i am is i kind of like hop back and forth between those two. Um, Was that a good definition of the Violet Shield? Like the outreach, like being on the outskirts, do you think? Do you feel that that well, was accurate? I think that's a good one. No, there's there's an almost intuitive sense that I find it a little difficult to articulate, but there is like a practitioner. Yeah, no, practitioner outreach, like a demonstrator kind of thing. Yeah, that uh, I, I, I would agree with that. So, um, yeah, I would agree. And what about the Iyani? Like, what do you, where, I was trying to get the answer from Rose, like, where are the Iyani located? Because she said that that's the foundation, you know, of everything. According to, according to the work that I know, my understanding, the Iyani were in the Eka. So we had our vertical thing going up. We had our, our five dimensions. On top of that, there was kind of another Cathara grid called the Eka. And there is a place on there they used to call, oh, sorry, they called Inner Earth, which is, which is a terrible name, but it's not inner it's not inside the earth it's up there in the echo and there's just a lot of portals that led to it underground um which is how they got the name um underground funny. yeah so there's portals that led to it underground so you'd kind of walk through the portal underground you're like oh there's a whole another world down here and it's, it's not underground you just got transported somewhere else it's funny it's like the one thing that the guardians used imprecise words on and it, it kind of like just like it's fun. It's just hilarious. Like they used imprecise words. They used the the, the like more of the earth words for that one time for like one thing, and it just got so confusing. So I'm like, okay, I can totally understand why you guys use all these specific words now. After that, so anyway, um, was that Cathara like, two three like the base shield bonding, like connecting with the Eka, like after yeah. at the end of it, you're connected that, to. It's around that period, yeah. So it was kind of a little bit earlier and so forth. And the Iani are kind of like their species and they look a lot like humans, like, you know, prettier and nicer and taller and, you know, all Six sorts fingers, of right. Or the thumb. And they, they were Two specific. Thumbs. Yeah. Kind of that sort of thing. So that's where I remember they're from, but there was a lot of them 
that kind of also lived on like Terra and they came down to earth quite frequently as well. And there's a bunch on median earth we found out during the sliders period. So, you know, that's kind of, we learned about them first from the Eka, but they were kind of all over. They were like, you could compare them to humans that had perfectly evolved, like humans that had fulfilled the 12, the, the 12 strand activation and you know quite frequently more. So, cause humans can do more. Um, 12 strand. I remember during the project Camelot video, the issue was like 12 strand minimum, minimum. So hu humans who have gotten that original, shall we say potential back and they were everywhere. So it's really interesting because, you know, there's an interesting parallel to that um, right around when, you know, Noel and Rose are bringing back the Yanni and so forth. What is the Asia talking about? The Nomi. What are the Nomi? The yeah. Nomi are, basically that template with K, with um, kind of as she calls it, the K plus eight factor, those internal creation things. I personally do not see that big of a difference between the Nomi and the Yanni. I think they're the same people, but that's just my opinion. So um, a lot of similarities. I mean, even, you know, Rose was echoing some of the same words that I'm hearing about the Effies, you know, the eternal, like, God, close to God stuff, you know, just closest uh, to God. Question now, isn't it? And that's a question we perhaps need to look at in Aisha's work in context is, is she describing the same thing from multiple different perspectives? Like each kind of change in the work, she's been talking to a new group of beings. These group of beings do not necessarily see things the same way. Like if you can sit, compare like the Hauteurs when they were describing kind of a lot of grid mechanics and so forth versus the Mashayas, they're describing the same thing, but it looks completely different the way they're describing it, which is how culture works. Um, is Yesha describing something, maybe uh, describing a, dip, a similar thing from a different perspective? I don't know I if know. she's... There's, there's some new light that's starting to shine on it, I know. It's getting yeah. different. So anyway, we're going to talk about the compatibility of the different kind of bodies of work towards the end. So you, you remind me of that, okay? I'll so anyway, uh, of that. Thank you. compatibility uh, of the different bodies of work. Right? Yeah. So, or, so anyway, my position, green, blue. I know a number of people who got very heavy violet shield, like, and the whole thing, the criticism of the, um, of the kind of whole split movement was the emphasis on, you know, falling and people externally manipulating you and so forth. That is a very good criticism. Indeed. From that perspective, if there is something occurring to you, there's a part of yourself that's really calling out for healing with that. Um, so the, a lot of the fear and a lot of the emphasis on possession and, oh, that person's contaminated and so forth is extraordinarily misplaced. But at the same time, and, you know, I indeed did not feel anything happened to the Violet Shield in August of 2011 when that, happened, when that was supposed to have happened. So I didn't feel a thing. I was there doing my work, my meditations, my, because <laughs> I was in chaos at the time. I'm like, <laughs> life is good. I felt, however, because I, I didn't have a good connection with Violet Shield, um, you know, so it's not surprising. Um, I did feel the green shield get contaminated, however. I was out one night, or no, I was out, no, no, I woke up one morning. I don't think I even think I was drinking that night. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I wasn't. Um, and I woke up with just this like horrific hangover feeling. It was just like this bad nausea, everything else, right in the middle of the India workshop when the green shield kind of like got contaminated. I felt this and throughout the next little while, maybe so October, 2011, the green shield again from Yasha's perspective got contaminated. October, 2012, the green and violet shields, according to her shattered. And then they kind of were floating about and now and then they're gradually being rebuilt now. And they're supposed to, at least last time she talked about them in KDDL2, they're going to be rebuilt and you know be fully functional in um, sometime in 2018. So anyway, I felt that happen. So that Rose's critique of that, of the whole fatally thing, that people were scared about being contaminated and scared about being forced to fall. And there was all this like, stuff going on with that all this group dynamics is entirely and completely correct that was bullshit and it needed to be called out and i'm glad that she did it the but whole fatal lead thing but there's the no virus thing. no no there was there was absolutely a problem with that the fear wasn't described right 
the fear and the social response and the kind of emphasis on purity and contamination and dirtiness and like almost evil and so forth, that was bullshit. Like we should have been coming together as a group instead of just like spreading out and saying they're infected and all this yeah. and just division. Yeah, no, we should have no, been I doing felt that like in the sky pod for sure. Yeah. yeah no, I was told that, by multiple sources. I mean, just people panicking, like do not was, do group text. You cannot do yeah with other people right now it's too dangerous and all it's and like, that basic idea is still in the shield oh yeah that, yeah it's being yeah, fed it's, it's being fueled i've seen it just, god knows there are going to be a dozen like a number of people who are like oh paul that bitch is a fatal leave so yeah. my response to that whoop de doo for y'all but um <laughs> well it's like she said we were just touching the surface of the whole attack thing which i absolutely resonate with that you yeah. you do move beyond this whole attack thing and people attacking and all this stuff i've i've no. i'll vouch for uh, my testimony is i've moved past that you know i don't blame people for stuff that i'm dealing with in my life for emotions or things there's accountability you step into period that is very true but that being said fatally do exist they are i know many of them because you know kind of according to Asia, and i agree with her on this fatally are themes, they're beings who've completed kind of the Adashi return process, who come back, lost their way, and became evil and mean and nasty and who are, you know, doing this like weird possession thing on people. And a lot of deception stuff. Yes. Just a lot of yeah. Yeah. That is that is correct. That I've seen these beings. I, I they feel do it like amidst, you know, but oh. I mean Now the number of people who like I've seen many and you know, many people have been I've seen many people being like influenced or pushed a little bit by them but the fact is as you get more and more kind of you grow personally and not just in terms of energetic techniques with chaos but as you become more and more whole of a person through naturopathic therapies or th or you know psychotherapy anything else that effect becomes less yeah absolutely yeah I mean it's going to test you and you're going to you know, there's intelligence that's gained from it, from making the wrong decision, the right decision. And you know, the whole, you know, how many people I've seen, like, I can see these beings because, you know, I know some of them. Um, you know how many people I've seen who've been fully dark flowered in my life? Four. Four beings only. Two of them in chaos. Two of them outside. And dark flowered implies yeah. like no go, no coming back stuff oh, or they, no, they still can no, heal. Yes. It means they are completely resonant with those kind of those fatally energies at the moment. No, there's totally going back. There's 100%. They've made the choice like it's done. No, it's, well, it's not that they made the choice. It's that they are at that moment when I, when I knew them, they are completely resonant with those fatally energies. Their energetic system runs on those. So after your dark flower, there's no, no going back, period, right? No. One of those people came back. He was not a chaoser. He was just some gay boy I knew in Calgary. He came back. And it was he that just, bad. I've like, seen him like, recently. Yeah, I know. He's fully, he was like, he was like really, really, like his energetic system really, really had that. And um, then I've seen him recently and he's better. Like, maybe not 100%, but like, he's better. And apparently, I've heard from friends, he's gone through a lot of stuff and he's really grown as a person because of that. And he's better. And, you know, that being I saw who was kind of infiltrating his fields and everything and um, was really, you know, um, yeah, it was just, it wasn't even someone I knew that well. It was just this person I, I was an acquaintance of mine. So it's like, no, he's a lot better and he's, you know, everything else. So I'm like, yeah, no. You think so maybe the, this, some of the, no going back is, is kind of bullshit. So you think any of, any of those dynamics are happening with their governments and people in power right now, as far as how far that they've gone, there might be redemption stuff where they're coming back. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Right. So that feeling of hangoveriness has recently come into my life again. You'll never guess when. The election, the American election, that November 8th or whenever it was, that night and the night after, I felt that same feeling of contamination I felt when the, when the green shield fell. Ooh, ah. Something happened. I know there are a number of people in chaos who are very, very pro-Trump, and I can honest to God see the, ver the, the merits of that. The American political system is horrific, and so the fact that someone who you had no idea what he was going to do, it looks more attractive than more of the status quo, anyone can relate to that. That's a, that's a good thing. I felt that same 
it's almost like this nauseous, hungover, almost like acrid feeling. And then because I'm in Canada and, you know, Canada and the United States have like this no touching zone. Like they shave down like like two meters between the two countries at their borders. So no touching zone. Um, so she's apparently having a continuous forest between us is terrible. Um, so that is not a defense or anything, but there's like being in a separate country, you get over things like that much quicker. So it's like, all right, so, you know, I couldn't sleep that night. Like literally the night of the election, I went to bed. I'm like, okay, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. Woke up the moment the election was called, I woke up like dead awake, like, like from completely asleep to like, I'm completely awake. And then with this, just that feeling. And I'm like, what just happened? Oh God, he won, didn't he? And because like, obviously I'm like most Canadians, we have like we were more on the Hillary side. Like we just kind of lean more that way towards the left of center. So anyway, um, I I heard that, and then I went down and checked, and yes, he did. And, you know, he did in fact win, and so forth. And then you know that day, it was kind of like I just felt kind of ucky that day. Um, of all things, I was doing outreach at a, I was doing kind of a, a meet and greet at a police academy. So I talked to a lot of people that way. That was fun. Um, God bless coffee. It got me through because I couldn't get there to spec to sleep that night, and it was like at two in the morning. So then I, um, after a couple of days, that feeling faded. And then I went to a workshop. So I went to Inspiring Homeopathy by um, one of my teachers and my hero, Kim Kalina. Um, she, so I flew down to LA and it was like flying into like a cloud of that feeling again. Like I got over it. It was, you know, Wednesday, Thursday. I was like, okay, I'm done, fine. Over it. Saturday flew down. It was like flying into a thing of it again. So it's like literally the atmosphere in LA just permeated with it. I'm like, oh god. And then I, I the, the workshop was in um, was in Marion, so just a little bit north of San Francisco. So I flew from LA to San Francisco and then took the bus. And it was just weird in there. It was that the thing. protests and everything that were going saw, on? Yeah, yeah. I saw I saw like the the thing and I saw how angry people were with each other and everything. So I was like, okay, yeah, I'm. I'm, I want to go home. So I did, I did the workshop and it was, it was a fabulous workshop. Um, was there any and, riots? Did it get that bad? Uh, or? I don't know. I saw graffiti and I saw people being angry, but like, you know, I wasn't there for any like marches or anything like that. I didn't see any looting or anything like that. I just saw people being pissed off. Yeah. At one another. So that's basically what it's been. Just people kind of hasn't taken that next so, thing or feels like it could go, you know, my, I will say, so that is what I have directly experienced physically and energetically myself. You're following me? Yeah. yeah. All right. A shield contamination event, a large one, identical to the, um, to the, um, to the, um, to kind of the, uh, the one from, um, October, 2011, like not identical, but like close. What the I'm, fatality I, thing? Oh uh, yeah, that kind of like you know shield compromise thing. So a similar kind of event happened, oh, yeah. at least according to my perception of that. With I don't know what shield. Any... Like what? Where's this happening? I can tell you. I can tell you that I'm connected to two shields, and one of them apparently is blown to smithereens and is slowly recombining itself. So aside from so the green shield or the gold shield, whatever you want to call it, that apparently was blown to smithereens in October 2012 and is gradually re accomplishing itself. The blue shield still active. I'm connected to those two. Make of that what you will. I cannot tell you which one it is. Okay. Right. So you that, don't want to just come out and say it, or you don't know. Or... I do. I, I honest to God don't know. Okay. Right. So those I mean, the, the fact... green shield must have just now been reforming itself according to what she's been teaching, well, and then they got shield, blown apart again. So each each shield had like kind of like there was a, a color to it. There was an original color and there was kind of like a fallen color and we would often identify the group of fallen angelics that were like working with that, the energies of that fall, the fallen components of that shield um, by their color. Like, you know, we'd call reds, greens, etc. So there was originally, there were three shields. There was the blue, the gold, not the green, gold, violet. There were the fallen components, red. So like you can think like, draconian ish type beings and so forth um green which is the fallen gold the anunnaki and then there never was one of the uh blue one but i think there is 
I think the fallen version, like the fallen, the distorted version of the blue one is white. So you know how we have those beings that were fall, they were fallen, you know, kind of a query that um, became like what you call what or what we would call like the white dragons. They, we'd have like these white first fall white dragons that have been working with us, but were a little bit, you know, a little bit intense. Yeah, I think that the white shield is really so. I know Yesha. This is against. Uh, Yesha specifically referred to the white blue shield as the thing. I'm not sure. I'm suspecting that the white shield is kind of that is that kind of distorted aspect of the of the blue shield, similar to the the, the green and the and the and the red shields for the other two. So, so suspicion of mine. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's kind of I I'm not sure whether one of those got contaminated or whatever or not. But yeah, no, that that kind of change and how we stopped calling the gold shield or even the gold like for a while it was the gold flame. We stopped calling that the gold flame became green. It was like yeah. what, 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 what's going on there? So I, I plan was still, on asking Noel about that too. Like where's the transition from that? And I was trying to go back in sliders eleven yeah. through twelve no, just, to see where she started using that term. Yeah. It was it was um, it was sliders twelve one I think um, yeah no I it just happened there was no explanation of it so anyway that is my suspicion is that we've got these three kind of you know aligned with the eternal with the original intention of creation and then not aligned with that and the different colors and everything like that and there's kind of like different archetypes and everything like the violets there's like the practitioner and the kind of demonstrator and the um, and kind of the the red version of it, the fallen version of that is the zealot, like you know someone who's like super intense and like crazy about things and like enforcing their way, um, or like you know the the really the the fanatic kind of thing. The the gold one, the kind of the archetype is like the healer, scholar, scientist kind of thing. The bad archetype is the mad scientist. The blue, it is kind of like the saint. The white is the inquisitor. Those are, those are kind of the, at least my view, the good and the bad. Makes sense, yeah. The polarities of it, I guess. So the question becomes now: these attitudes within chaos about contamination and about, you know, purity and impurity and so forth are still existing. Like, you're not on indigos, are you? No, I haven't been on for like a, a couple of yeah. years, probably a year yeah. and a half. Yeah. So recently there have been, like, as I said, I like Ian. He's been posting a lot about a number of things. And one of his posts really, 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 really struck me. There's a post on how, and so David Aquarian, who, who's supposed to be working with Asia quite closely, mentioned in a comment one time that it was not a good idea to do old techniques. Didn't mention why or how come or anything. Well, Asia. That's what the whole August workshop explains why. Pretty much. Well, the the August workshop it explains it does not explain why it explains that beating reversals is how she explained it. If you're not doing it with the new plasmas, yeah, she did. She did. Not, did she say not to do that? No, she not said, directly. No, but there's a the, lot of things not directly wording, said that people were taking literal. Yeah, the specific wording was that the flame body techniques were tied into the green and to the or to the green to the you know gold violet shields those shields were having problems right now so they weren't a good idea to do without this level of protection that needed to be well first of all that needed to be made explicit the reasoning behind that you know if you're just telling people don't do this do it like it's like it's yeah. just stupid it's, yeah. um yeah no so um basically that need to be made explicit but that was the thing so those shields broke kablooey and are being reformed quistically now according to august 2014 that dvd so that that's pretty that's pretty established but the idea of against having doing done old technique like ian went and did this long thing about how old techniques were were not a thing to do and how he got to focus on the plasma ones and so forth and i have a pretty a couple of problems like that on that first of all if something like that was true why the hell would not a formal announcement be made that is that is irresponsibility like right there if you've got a group of people you've helped brought down these techniques and all of a sudden they're not good to do and you're not doing that if that is the case 
not making an announcement about that is 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 quite irresponsible. And in the past, when there have been issues, at least allegedly about you know she, linking yourself into shields that are apparently supposed that are contaminated or something, um, you know they've been really prompt about that. So it's like, no, please you know, do it this way. This is you know they haven't given a reason why, but it's like you know do this first and then do your thing. And like subtle but, implications, I guess, not direct formal stuff. Though. The second implication of that is. If those techniques, even with the plasma protection, kind of the, the techniques we've got now, the, the new FE energies and the plasma energies and whatnot are are still like hold not I could buy that they might not be, you know, might not be particularly helpful or they might not be a beneficial use of your time. But the wording was and the idea is that many people in the group were agreeing with that they were actually harmful. In which case you're like, wait, what? If they are harmful to someone who's undergoing this kind of, you know, illumin air ascension, you might call it this kind of like leap into internal or eternal creation. If they're harmful to that progress, that would imply that they are out of alignment with, you know, eternal life principles. They're, you know, they're not in alignment with those energies. It's feeding the external distortions, right? That's my well, understanding. No, the inner, we're going inner, and they're external and stuck and well, falling and. If, if they are, if those original techniques were as we thought they were, in harmony with kind of eternal creation, in harmony with this kind of, you know, the original intention of life anywhere in the universe or anything, if they are in, shall we say, Christic, in harmony with the eternal um, principles which we represent by, you know, those seven sounds of creation, Kavaryasa Tahala, if they're in alignment with that, they should be in alignment with everything else that is in alignment with that that kind of disconnect thing, that idea of a disconnect is very troubling in its implications. If things from earlier in the work aren't complete, like aren't in alignment with that, what the hell will we doing doing them? And where does this fit with, uh, this came to mind, like the FOL 10 and the spirals yeah. and like the yeah. Metatronic spin and yeah. what does all that fit in? That's a, that's a talk for another interview, Chris. I have my own quite different thoughts on that. <laughs> So, Some feel that that's right when the split started happening was with uh, like the latch on thing. Mm -hmm. the shields yeah, I feel that. Um, as I said, there have been three splits, so it's been happening a long time. So anyway, um, that those two implications are are quite disturbing. So I I would say now even more disturbing, or not disturbing, but like people are not wanting to do different sets of techniques. Like Rose was very clear. I don't really resonate. Like she kind of neutrally went on the, um, the August, 2012 yeah. journey said eh, it was okay. Uh, didn't really get a good thing with, or, you know, and it, you know, her heart wasn't moved by it. Fair enough. Resonates with the older work. There is a lot of people in the newer work who do not resonate at all with the older work. I've yeah. talked to people yeah. and they actually feel the older work is painful to them. Like they'll, they'll do the technique and it'll hurt. And I'm like, wait, what? And I am one of those weird people that I resonate with all of it. So really, like, you know, some parts of it really move my heart more than others, like the Mashiachana stuff, like just, ah. But, you know. I'm just the, feeling the new stuff like no other. Like, I remember yeah. the Maharak Shield and just how, how, that, how experiential that was. And now it's like, this is the next level of that. And with other people, like, I wasn't, I didn't have the connectivity in the group with people that were doing the same frequency mm -hmm. you know and just like you're you're swimming in it like it's just there you know it's in our lives and very That's, tangible yeah. stuff. Right. like sue clemson he's, he's a friend of mine she gave me this really like she has gone through this as well there's a particular period that really really moved her and since then she's liked it and you know, loved it but that period kind of really like imprinted her deeply and i feel the same way about the mashai hana stuff so but i'm still on board and i'm still like i still feel resonant with these new frequencies. So I'm one of those odd people that can do like the breadth of it. Whereas it appears that many other people are focusing on like, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to like, which is like, what did, did you do the elemental clearing rooms from Katie? Yes. Dale? I do that almost every week. Really? Like, you know, I do like a short version. I don't do the whole, whole yeah. but I'll like, you know, up there. What is that? Like, you know, so I, I, it's like a little etheric spa. I'm just going to go soak up there in, you know, purple today. Or, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, or, you know what? I feel like soaking up in turquoise today or something. So, you know, I, I do that quite frequently. Okay. So, yeah, no, I do that and a lot. And that was a good thing. I really like that one. So, um, but yeah, no. So that's kind of, flame body stuff, anything old stuff? I, 
do actually. I still do occasionally um, some of the old. Di- I still do the old dial up uh, once in a while. Oh. So you know, remember that Ancient. stuff. And, yes, yeah, I still do it. My, My thoughts are by clearing those light body structures directly. You are in fact accelerating. Like maybe it's not as productive. I as mean, doing it makes something. sense. Yeah, you're in fact, excel. You're bringing in those crystic frequencies into your light body. You're accelerating your transfiguration or whatever you we're know. doing. But the idea that okay, no, that's harming you. I'm like, yeah. If it's harming you now, it was harming you then too. Well, like, yeah, yeah. that's that's kind of a thing. Unless there's like a complicated shield mechanics hooking into like. A, a contaminated shield or something in which case the contaminated shields don't even really exist anymore how on earth is this possibly harmful yeah i know there's some level uh, of paranoia still there with that i know no there's a deeper thing chris i don't know what it is there are a number of people involved in this work that have it would seem to be a great affinity and sometimes affinity to period x in the work and a number of these people have an, a not affinity, but like a, you know, what's the opposite of affinity? A, a counterfinity. I, I, the, I know there's an opposite to affinity, a disfinity to other aspects of it. And I, I find that very curious. Are some people here only to, you know, do a particular aspect of this job? Is it a family? Is it a spirit family kind of thing? Like certain spirit families really resonate with these energies, but not with these ones. If these energies are all Christic, then theoretically they should all get along with each other. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, like this is this is a really cure. This is a puzzle to me, and I can't really figure it out right now. I mean, maybe the answer will come to me, but I'm not. And I gotta say, right now, like Rose is my hero. Like when you hear her talking, and you hear Rose and Noel talking, and they've got criticism certainly of other people. But the way that they embody those that responsibility and those virtues and that owning of their own stuff and kind of like that is very inspiring. And I will tell you what, I, I, I'm not privy to the inner circle or whatever, their their kind of behavior, but I do not see that stuff coming from them. I do not see that coming from the people who are super resonating with um, kind of like that that group of people that's not resonating with the old work and so forth like um no no i will name names ian and you know james and tia and you know mark i like mark he's a really interesting guy he does interesting stuff same thing i do not see that kind of that kind of shall we say saintliness coming from them well just what she said about like we should all be able to talk to each other regardless of what technique you're doing you know or yeah. what part and of i'm not going to hold myself out as 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 like someone who's saintly, I'm really not. You you know me, Chris. You know I'm a lovely, smart, interesting person, but I ain't no fucking saint. So, um, you know, I'm not going to hold myself out as being better than that. But I will say at the very least, I own what I am. I know I can be snarky. I know I can be a bit of a bitch. And I know I can get vindictive. But I own that. And I work with that. And, you know, oddly enough, I am still getting, y'all may not believe me, but I am getting better and I'm healing that slowly. Not as much through chaos, more through my own, you know, the work that I'm doing with, with, um, with my own homeopathic work and my counseling and everything else like that. So I'm getting better that way. I will say that from people who apparently were kicked out of the shield for being contaminated or whatever and resonate with older bits of the work, they're portraying themselves in a far more Christic light and the very least portraying themselves. And I will say from Rose and Nolan interacting with them, they legitimately do interact with people in that far more Christic light than many people who have embraced the newer work and are going on quite a lot about that and are still embracing the paranoia and like this person's a fatally and that person's a fatally and so forth. When you say not from KS or is part of this, like just seeing how the group is and how people are, treating each other and just how lowly vibration all this stuff is or whatever. Uh, just No, my, the most of the work that I, is just professional for me, it's like homeopathy. You know, I love homeopathy. I One day, you want me to do a, 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 a talk about my version of homeopathy with you, Chris? I will do that. It will be fun. I will blow your mind. But um, yeah, no. So stuff outside of chaos for me is just, you know, I, you know, I do my chaos. I do my energy work. But, but I, I mean, do, uh, uh, my direction is like looking at why you're saying like not from chaos. You're not getting any healing from chaos or 
Just like that's not that I'm, I would not say that I am saying I will not say any healing. My energetic system has changed. It is better. It is more more whole. elsewhere though than yeah. case. My physical body has not changed. Right. Yeah. There's that could be one multiple can, reasons. You know. One cannot ignore that. There are multiple reasons, many of which I suspect and I'm working on. I'm not going to talk about them publicly because you know I'm not sure. Yeah. God knows, I probably won't be able to be sure until I'm act, I have a cure for them. But I um, mean, I don't think that that's just because our bodies aren't changing. I don't think that that's like you know saying that it's not helping, it's not working in some ways I, that we might I, not. You're right. You were completely right, Chris. I think it is helping. Do you do but, a technique and like see? Do you, is there like this after effect that you get in life in 3D where there's where you can see it out picture through your DNA like what you did? No, and no. my I just feel good. I'm like hey, new energy, and I'll there's start. No, there's no exchange reciprocal thing with your hologram in 3D. Not really. It's never been like that with me. Okay. Yeah. So I know that's your thing. You will do a new technique or a new energy will come in. You'll you'll out picture it. Yeah, it's like instant. It's like just like a that's like a stream, not, you know, just that is not my thing. Yeah. So, I will say Chris cuz I want to finish that. Okay. I agree with you that yes, just because we're not physically healing and, you know, uh, that does not mean the techniques aren't doing their thing or they're not working or whatever, but it is something we should be aware of. Okay. Right. Yeah. To what extent like be aware of for what what do you what 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 are your what's your opinion just come out with it. What do you thinking why or what's do you have an opinion on two reasons i think that there's a miasmatic thing that truly affects that truly prevents the the you know energetic systems of the body from physically interacting with um or from interacting with physicality that miasm gets thicker and thicker as time goes on like particularly in the modern world so there's um that's part of the reason why i think there's a miasmatic thing second thing is i think a lot of the techniques are i i talked to you this before the beloveds aren't doing aren't doing a lot of the techniques they're doing to specifically to heal us physically or to get a stargate ready they're healing us to get the next level of energy and to do the next level grid work like there's a very shall we say there's a very goal oriented they go into the the last follow-up yeah yeah so that's my opinion on that those two dimensions speaking of the last follow-up when we we did like a whole two-hour interview and the video got messed up this was before the elections and it was very political talk that we did I think the guardians didn't like, we were just chatting politics. Very and political. Else yeah. So anyway, so, um, I, well, I, I wanted, don't think the guardians wanted that to be seen. So I'm like, all right guys. take Yeah. It. yeah. But there were some things like you had, uh, certain things that you wanted to go over from the last follow up, like to, yeah. to correct or to expand okay. on or different things. So anyway, um, my concerns about kind of like, you know, a lot of people on earth, um, having bad life, having you know, illness from the previous, uh, the pre from kind of the, the higher energies, apparently those are being corrected and, you know, that's wonderful. So apparently the current level of energies are going to make sure that people don't have horrible deaths from kind of the new waves of energy coming in. So if that's the, I, I, I do think that's the case and that does sound like something the guardians would do and take care of. I applaud. Wonderful. Hooray. My concerns come to nothing, which is exactly what you want your concerns to come to. They're um, not being like killed, killed off or killing themselves off or whatever. It's not. The, it is becoming, it is still a, it is still a removal. That the more part, amnesty happening, like transition bridges and things. That, that part saying? can't. Well, no, that part can't really. We can't dance around that. There are still a lot of beings who think of Earth as their home and came here as refugees or have lived here for however many millions of years who are going to have to leave because they don't want to do this kind of evolutionary pathway. Or they just don't have the template to do it, or the DNA. Oh, if, if they have the template, I'll okay. I'll tell you beings right now. There is no one who does not have a template that is fixable there's no one okay no i've known this because with the plasma template i mean it's offered to everybody back before then i knew just deep in my soul there is no one who is not capable of getting that stuff worked out and fixed so i say you know if you are thinking you're one of those people go talk to someone there's a guardian out there who knows how to fix your stuff and to get you going along like that's totally possible and doable i've seen the darkest and the deepest and the evilest of beings get fixed and have a really good life and do a dashi return fully and everything so i've seen that happen so there's no one who can't get fixed but there's people who don't want to 
there's people who want to live with their people and do that kind of thing and who don't like don't feel like they have to change or anything and you know you have to respect that as a medical professional when someone doesn't want to heal something i have to respect that like if they're like i don't want to go there we're not going there we'll go work on you know whatever else so there's beings who are you know not going to heal because they don't want to or they don't feel like they should or yeah. anything else like they want to they don't want to be different than their family or whatever she, she's been explaining that, like Katie Dale said, there's the option there for the for the fall, Fermi fall thing and stuff. They so want to go back. They are going to have to leave, at least according to the this kind of iteration of the work by Aisha. Earth is just as much their home as it is mine, as it is yours, as it is anyone else's. So yes, that needs to be acknowledged that there are some beings because of this stuff that are going to have to leave, and that is unfortunate and sad. Now, the beings who are left may not be so terrible, like, you know, if, you know, you're a kind of a nasty person who's, you know, been a serial killer for 15 lifetimes or whatever. Uh, the rest of us may be like, woof, let me show you the door uh, kind of thing. But, you know, for them still, I, you know, this is their home. Uh, it's sad to kick a being out of their home no matter what they've done and so forth. So those are my feelings on that. And those basic ones haven't changed. I mean, I guess it depends on, on, uh, like your point of reference of seeing it. Huh? Yeah, it doesn't mean I wouldn't do it anyway. It doesn't mean that I would think about the current situation, but it is still, yeah, sad. So, I mean, it depends on what how you're viewing it, though, as far as it being sad, because, I mean, some of them, that's, they're, they're more accustomed to that, it seems like, mm -hmm. also. You know, like, that's just, that's how they're their design or how they've got to be there's free will in all of this basically you know i mean there's decisions that were made and comfortable decisions that have been made like just over and over also i think that should be acknowledged mm -hmm. i don't know how sad it can be as far as i don't know I, I, i'm i'm kind of seeing that like the depths of that in relations with people and mm -hmm. you know i I used to feel like pity for some of it. I'm kind of moving out of that and just realizing, well, this is really a decision. This is really a choice that's being made. This person's, you know, choosing to do this, whether they come out of it or not, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of, that's going too far beyond my middle ground space, I guess, you know, but there's a consciousness that's like that. That's just comfortable that's with making these decisions. And that's my, and that is you new. Know, that is my views and opinions on that. Chris, you do not have to share them if you don't want to. Right. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, back to back to kind of the current political situation. So I felt this craziness thing going on. You know, I've talked with James a couple of times since then, and James is very pro, like James Bober, very pro-Trump. So is Ian. Many of them are very pro-Trump. A couple of them have said things that have just been horrifying. I remember one time Ian was comparing um, taking, was it removing refugees and from some from a country to like Christics who would keep everyone else away to keep their gene line pure and so forth. And I'm like, that is not what the human project was about. The human project was always specifically about, it is very much like the United States motto, bring me your tired, your weak, your huddled masses in the human project. As I remember it, as I remembered nurturing it and working on it for hundreds of millions of years. So, uh, huh. There's over uh, zones of ethnic hygiene stuff all through chaos. There is, so there is, there is that as what there's feed it too. They just, yeah, no, there's an attitude of that, like ethnic purity kind of crap. And that is bullshit. And that must be condemned immediately. Like that is the human, the human project was give me your fallen beings. Give me your frightened, give me your slaves, give them all of this to us. We can, by birthing into one of these bodies, these beings can reconstruct themselves, take themselves out of slavery and achieve absolute freedom in 30 years. They can live a healthy, joyous, help, happy life, achieve ascension, however we're defining that, and get that done immediately. It was not about keeping it pure to Ayani or pure to, you know, you know, beings fresh out of the um, uh, out of the, the inner domains and so forth. It was about anybody who wanted to get better. Could well, this is what Alex went into. Did you, did you hear all of Alex's interview, Alexander Puckett, about I, kind of I how forget. the Guardians adopted like some lineages to, yeah. you know, it's just... It, it, it's, Not, <laughs> goddamn point. 
It's like many people just weren't here for as long as I have. The whole point of the human lineage was to do that. It was for anybody to come in and reconstruct themselves as the wonderful and healthy being that they were and, and go and, you know, to their next, you know, the universe beyond or whatever to go and continue on in their evolution instead of being stuck here as slaves forever. That was the whole point. It wasn't about keeping anything pure. The whole nature of humanity was to purify, was to heal, was to get overcome those, those kind of mutations and things like that. The idea that ethnic purity and kind of the nastiness that's the the chauvinism that's being expressed in the public domain nowadays and not just by trump i mean trump is actually not that bad if you listen to his actual statements i mean there's edges of it depending on his audience but you know not that bad in terms of that but in terms of a, like a lot of the other things that are going on in the public domain right now about that are just that people could equate those two conceptions is just absolutely horrifying to me like, I cannot condemn that strongly enough. That is a wrong idea. And that is something that I cannot go along with and will not cooperate with because it's wrong. There's my rant. What are you saying? So, like, what in particular, what subject matters and stuff? So, in, ter in, terms of, in terms of politics on the planet these days, there is, I will say, a return to cultural hegemony. That's a complicated term. It's ter So hegemony means basically the dominance of one particular model, one particular group of people, and quite often the state, not the state in the sense of the United States government, but the state as in government itself, enforcing that on people. There used to be, that used to be the model. There used to be like, you know, a cultural norm and the state would enforce it. Like, you know, I just watched The Crown on Netflix and a big deal was having the monarchy enforced the social, what they, what the church thought that, you know, people should be. So, you know, Queen Elizabeth's sister wanted to get married in the drama. I mean, who knows what really happened, but Queen Elizabeth's sister in the drama wanted to marry this guy who got divorced and she couldn't allow it because she was the monarch and she had to enforce social norms like that kind of a thing. Like the government saying, this is what you should be do this. And if you know, if you don't do that, you are excluded and you do not get to participate in the life of the community. There is a resurgence of that, whether it's, Vladimir Putin and his kind of idea that, you know, Western and his, if you kind of look through, he's investing a lot of money and effort in, into creating stable heterosexual families, not a bad thing, like creating stable families and employment and things like that is good. But there's a lot of emphasis on like the traditional family and a great deal of Russian Orthodox backing to him and kind of that whole nuclear family, stable heterocentric world that's going on to the not only ignorance but to the detriment of you know other people and you know particularly gays in russia we're not doing fucking well there so um and that's an outcome of this model there's this emphasis on like all right you know what you know soviet union and everyone else and modern society is getting is you know kind of emphasizing that you know they've emphasized away from the family and we're going to return that you know heterosexual man centric family to its you know what they think is its proper place um, it's linked into what you're filling after the election, the shield thing, the getting there. Okay. So secondary thing, um, you can see this also in terms of ethnic dominance in the States. There's this particular dimension to it. That's not only about the heterosexual family or whatever, but there's also this particular dimension of it being the white heterosexual family. And you can see this again, not so much in Trump himself, but in a lot of his advisors and particularly this clustering of people called the alt-right people like bannon and people like you know remember that guy um, a couple days after the trump um trump won and like everyone in his he had a conference and everyone was like sig hiling him or you know hile trump hile our people and everything else like that and they're doing this openly and like 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 that kind of thing like it's the same it's the return of this idea of the state as a enforcer of a particular dominant cultural norm rather than the idea of the state as the the state as the guarantor of the public space of the the creator of a space in which anyone of any cultural norm you know that can get along can go and make their way in life as they see fit so there's these two models here like literally i'm doing my energetic thing right here feel them the state is the the state is the enforcer of a cultural norm and kind of the enforcer of a dominant group 
the state is the guarantor of the public space that anyone can succeed and, and have as much freedom as they can to live their life however they see fit. Because, you know, the state acknowledges it can't direct how your life should go. You should. Those are two very different models. The Trump, Putin, Duterte, kind of um, Le Pen, you know, Marie Le Pen kind of thing in and in, um, and there's a wing of the Conservative Party in Britain that does this. And certainly, I'm not going to say that there's not a wing of the Conservative Party in Canada that does this too. There's a woman called Kelly Leach who's running to be head of the Conservative Party who's very much in this camp. Hope she loses. Um, that model is really the one. That model is spreading. There's two major Western countries that haven't been seriously afflicted by it right now, and one of which may, may be soon. Um, so there's Germany, Germany had experience with this model before and they remember how it went for them and they do not sensibly are not wanting to go there again. Hopefully that stays that way. The second is Canada. Canada, for all its many faults, we've gone down that road. We committed genocide against native people. Like not physical, like concentration camp genocide, but like, you know, we committed cultural genocide against our native people doing that. And at the very least, we have learned our lesson there. We haven't quite atoned for that yet, but we have learned our lesson and like, we're not going there. We've seen how that goes. So there are those two models of government and this one, the kind of the enforcement of cultural of, of supremacy is taken another sw thing at swing at things. And the interesting part is that Trump actually seems to be quite a nice guy, but underneath his election has flown in a lot of really like horrifically evil, like Evil's the wrong word. I should not say that. It's my own bias coming through. A lot of really, I will say, Republicans that are going to do a lot of that enforcement of the cultural standards kind of thing, like Pence, who, if I recall correctly, took a bunch of money for HIV prevention when he was governor of Indiana, put it into conversion therapy, like, oh, that'll that'll help, um, and kind of things. There's a lot of people who are doing that, and a lot of people who are basically letting their very Anne Randian, so the philosopher, well, the, the writer Anne Rand, the, her ideas kind of ideas run amok. There's a lot of people who on a good day, most of the public would look at and be like, Ugh, kind of um, who came in a, on Trump's coattails and are going to have the chance to affect his agenda that way. Has he actually appointed people in the cabinet already? Is that yeah. already out? Well, he's, these are the people, I mean, I think they're going through like confirmations now or something. So as of today, which is January 9th, 2017, um, that's happening. So yeah. And there are some very concerning people there. Like, some of them are actually pretty good. You know, some of them are good and he may do some good work there, but that kind of Republican thing is very concerning to me. And secondly, I've talked to, I've talked to James about this and so forth. There's this idea right now that Trump is kind of in much of the, and EH hasn't commented upon this wisely, quite possibly, but there's this idea that Trump was running the Christic agenda and he's going to over, he's going to prosecute, you know, Hillary for all the crimes that apparently she committed. And, um, he's going to, you know, end the federal reserve and, you know, that kind of thing and destroy the Illuminati. And it's very interesting that even Corey good, like, you know, Corey, I follow Corey good. He's a nice guy. Um, He's also endorsed Trump. So there's this whole endorsement of that part of the new age community into this Trump figure and everything else like that. If you pay attention to what Trump is actually doing, the kind, a lot of it is just like, you know, the Republicans and the people who came in under him and who now have almost absolute control over the United States government because of him. Um, that is, that is not what their agenda is. Their agenda is not to do that. Their agenda is corporate oligarchy. I mean, it's the same people who were active under Bush who were doing all those crazy things then. So it's like, oh, and one of the interesting things I discussed with James is James thought um, Hillary Clinton was a, a red dragon. So red means basically draconian, green, Anunnaki-esque. Um, Hillary Clinton was explicitly identified as a green dragon in the sliders 2-3 period. 100%. She was identified as that. The Democratic Party was identified as Green Dragons. So it was very Anunnaki influenced. Most left of center political parties in the world are Anunnaki influenced. That is how their mind works. They do kind of a socialist system on their own world, on their own kind of societies. Um, 
there's this kind of flip that's happened in certain parts of the KS shield and everything else like that. And it's kind of gone along with, it's kind of merged. Like there's this idea, Hillary's red, she's evil. Uh, this is all linked into the KS. Like, yeah. What, yeah. So I'm almost done. Shields. So anyway, it's a very interesting thing. So in 2008, a group of green dragons and a group of Christics came together and formed an alliance that was later joined by some white dragons and quite a lot of reds. And basically almost everyone's kind of popping into this alliance now. It was called the Treaty of Alvignon. It is kind of what the original Treaty of Altair should have been if it was successful, and it has held up actually quite well. She hasn't talked about it in a really long time, but I think it's still in effect. Can the you Treaty summarize that? Yeah, you're about to. Uh, summer, well, the I, Treaty but, of Altair. Or, or, Altair the Altair, Treaty of Altair was a bunch of Anunnaki, a bunch of Christics getting together and cooperating with the intent of creating an ascension outcome for the planet Earth. The Anunnaki, by and large, defected and joined kind of the United Intruder Resistance and went for like a, a kind of a, 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 a fall agenda for Earth, kind of a planetary slave thing. And then they eventually came back, like, you know, seven years later and, you know, hey, guys, we changed our minds. So which is just if you know the Anunnaki, like. I love the Anunnaki. I, I have appreciate I, you can if you appreciate their culture, you can work with them. And if you can't, they're going to eat you alive. That's just how it works. It's the same thing with red dragons. You know, it's like you appreciate their culture, and if you not, you, if you don't, you, and if you do that, you can work with them. If you don't, they're gonna kill you. Like so Klingons or something. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I swear to God, whoever knew, whoever designed Klingons knew those beings because uh, that is what they are like. They are Klingons. It's like an honor code or something. Yeah. You know, just in the the error of it. Yeah. Klingons versus um, uh, you know what the actually the Star Trek equivalent of of the Anunnaki is. The Vulcan High Command from Star Trek Enterprise. That's them to a T. Anunnaki? Really? Vulcans? Not not Vulcans. There's a specific so in Star Trek Enterprise there's this group called the Vulcan High Command that was really like really fun like really just smug and superior and kept humans down for a long time. And if you walk Star Trek Enterprise, like you will see that relationship they had. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. And and there's a group called the Vulcan High Command, and that is them to like it. Oh, that's just like, they, you got them there. That is them to a T. So anyway, here we are with this. And I still think, you know, I think Hillary Clinton was an Anunnaki. I don't know her personal origin because God knows I don't know her personally. But um, she displays their behavioral, like she is someone who lives their culture. Like their culture is so alive in her and her their culture is just so... Like she embodies their culture to such an extent that I can't see how anyone who knows the Anunnaki and the Draconians would really see otherwise. So anyway, she's kind of the queen of the Anunnaki. Um, I would, I would not maybe literally, but you know, metaphorically. And then here's this Albanian coalition going for re-election and so forth in the United States. And then all of a sudden, there's all this stuff, you know, electing about ele all this kind of allegations and all this stuff. And some of it does come from the disclosure movement, particularly from Corey Good. And Corey Good has always been an interesting guy. Do you know? Um, I really, he seems to be doing quite well and being quite integr, being quite you know full of integrity in his reporting and so forth. One thing really, really struck me though. So recently, he's been talking with this guy. He calls him Ambassador Mika. Ambassador Mika is from a planet very much like ours that just got rid of kind of what they call the cabal in his work calls them the cabal. Um, they just got rid of the cabal. They just got rid of it completely and so forth. And he's coming to help us do the same thing. That name, Mika, that should ring a bell. Does that ring a bell for you, Chris? I'm trying to place a, the, there is some kind of familiar encryption thing. 2006, there was a, uh, there were threshold activations and what were the threshold activations about? The Mika Mecca complex. Okay. Right. Mika being where was Mika? Parallel Earth. What is the what is this kind of Mika personage kind of telling us where he's from? What so Mika is from Parallel Earth. What happened on Parallel Earth? It's, on Parallel Earth in 2012, they got rid of all Christics. Like yeah, that plant. It's like all, like everything. Like and, and, yeah they got rid of, I would suspect they got rid of anyone allied to them. Who was allied to us in 2012? 
the Anunnaki, <laughs> this kind of Albanyan treaty thing. What that person and Mika was talking about was getting rid of the Anunnaki plus the Christics, which they seem to have conglomerated in their heads because we were allied and we have, you know, cooperated multiple times throughout the past. And, you know, I could see how they, so they were, t- so this guy got rid of Anunnaki plus Christics. He's like, Hey, yeah, no, this is, you know, I'm, we're going to help your planet do the same thing. And I'm like, Oh, that kind of dawned on me. I was like, Oh, Oh, that's who Corey Good's working for. So well, you um, heard what that, Mark said about the, I mean, the Saturn symbols and the inner earth people and the agendas. Yeah, yeah that is. So that's it's kind like Christi- of their Christics need to wake up and look at the symbols, you know, yeah. look at this well, no, stuff. That's it, exactly. So that is my thing. So we've got this inner earth people or no, sorry, not inner earth people. He's got this, you know, person, this Mecca or this Mecca person who's got these like very clearly Christic intonations and, you know, insinuations about him endorsing this guy who is actively campaigning against with, you know, open propaganda techniques against the, um, the Albanian host against this political party that for that, you know, eight years ago and also four years ago was holding the Albanian treaty. Yeah. That's what I think happened is, I mean, I don't, I have no idea what about Trump and his origins. I mean, I, I don't, I, like Trump seems kind of rogue. Like he's just, I mean, self-made and just kind of got in. Yeah, I know. It, it's so I have no idea about him, but yeah, the, not many people so, do. So. But the people under him and the party he is representing, those are the people who have always been historically opposed to the Albanian Treaty. Which you know what? We're still. I think we're still in. So the fact remains. You know, yeah, that's where it is right now. And what did I feel on November eighth? Did I? feel a shield penetrate did i or did i feel the shield penetrate did i feel a shield get compromised did i feel the albanyan shield lose control of a great deal of the planetary grids i don't know what i felt but i felt something bad happen and i maybe it'll take a little while for me to figure that out Um, filters and all too you know yeah well i i i am perfectly you know it's canada I do have a bit more of an affinity towards Anunnaki style politics. I do left of center. I tend to be center left and center left would be quite far left in the United States. So I have an affinity to that kind of politics. Yeah, no, I did hope that Hillary Clinton won because that kind of stuff, I under no impression that she was perfect, but I, that yeah, style of pizza gate stuff about what are you saying on that? The FBI. And- I've read a little bit about that. I'm so I will say basically so far they have, no eyewitnesses, no pe- no actual people who like they've got people who've had you know childhood sexual abuse come she forward. Seems and talk. pretty upset about it. So does uh, oh. what's his name? The guy that they're like, Odessa. Yeah. yeah. No. Anyway, they're actually speaking out about this and the fake well, I, news campaign and all this. I mean, that says a I lot would, to me. Okay, so I would say okay, no eyewitnesses, no physical evidence. Basically, the start of this was that somebody said, "Oh, this equals this," and they invented this email code thing i'm like my immediate symbols yeah yeah all the symbols and everything else like that um or all the kind of email code that that one guy came out with so my thought is my immediate fbi right no it wasn't that wasn't the fbi that was just random person releasing on the internet so um they said it's the fbi's cold language or or the way of detecting them and I'm sure they said that. Um, I'm not sure if that's actually true or not, but I'm sure. You know, I don't think. Well, they, they said it's all public documents to go look on the on the government websites, and they have links. And I mean, it looks pretty legit to me. At this moment, I remain unconvinced because the basics are this system of interpretation of Podesta's emails, and Podesta is a campaign manager. What the hell is going to happen if he actually wants a pizza? <laughs> That was a joke. Right? It's, it's done for. Right. Uh, well, no, and that's the interesting thing too is that there is this whole PizzaGate thing going on. Who is literally the one candidate who has said anything about UFO disclosure? It wasn't Trump? It, Hillary Clinton did distinctly request said, "Yeah, no. If I had, I wanted to get that. Like she mentioned on Jimmy Kimmel, I don't know a while ago, okay. she wanted UFO disclosure." Wow. She's like, yeah, no, there's files there. I want to get access to them, and I want to release them. She wanted a war with Russia too. Well, no, that's the well, well, that's another thing. She wanted, 
to get UFO disclosure. She mentioned it publicly. Podesta also tweeted publicly and repeatedly he wanted that. Trump has mentioned nothing about this. So the idea, oh, yeah, it's kind of funny that all this conspiratorial stuff has focused on those two and demonizing them with things that, frankly, at this moment have no physical evidence and nothing more than just like an email code or something behind them. So I'm not, I have no idea what's going on in Washington. I really don't. I, I don't want to know. I do get the sense that there's some dark stuff. Is it those two in particular that are doing it? At this point, I need a bit more evidence. Yeah. Witnesses, people willing to come forward, physical evidence, and not people some are guy. People killed. It seems like, like just well, taken no, out it, that were surrounded around the campaigns. And... The thing, and more that physical evidence than you know an idea that some pizza, that some pizza parlor or something is um, you know a location of all this, and with, you know that's making people with guns going blazing in, and you know I'm going to go look for that. Like, okay, yeah, I, I I will say I don't think there's much to it. I what, think it is. I've seen a lot of conspiratorial nonsense on the internet, and that seems to fit the pattern. What is it? What so, are you? What did you see about the the people that were like kind of going after Hillary, and then all of a sudden wound up dead, or people associated with people against Hillary? I, I admit I have not looked into that. So I haven't that, either. I, I just kept hearing stories, people posting a lot of it, but yeah, making so jokes I've, about it. I have no idea. So I have no idea about that. Um, and that's like probably the last interview thing where it got political and we lost all the video. <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't know about that, and I really that's I haven't looked too far into the did not have investigated it. And yeah, so I'm like, that's what know. Mark said too. That I really appreciate it. Like, it's not our concern. He, he said, I don't know, and frankly, I really don't care what they're doing. It's not it's not on our path or what, where we're going. You know, of what we're yeah what we're here to do basically it's kind That's of distracting enough, but i know it would be interesting to know and so forth but yeah I information's suspect, useful so my suspicion about what happened with all of what's going on with all of those suspicion it is wild speculation i yeah. do not have sense to do That's that good disclaimer. my suspicion is that a lot of the the individuals kind of with the democratic party were targeted in a sp very specific propaganda war like pizza gate like yeah, this whole I thing felt, about you know, emails yeah, that these people are being specifically targeted and made to seem like horrible, horrible people um, in an effort to move votes and things that there was a, a specific propaganda war doing that. Again, I wouldn't. The Russians are good at propaganda. Does that mean they did that? Well, eh, I don't know. But um, I'm not in I'm not privy to all those intelligence things. I suspect they may have had a hand in it. But, you know, a propaganda war can be just as easily started by, you know, Breitbart or whoever. Or and you know, I will say, on record, fake news is a problem. How many how many times have you seen me, Chris, commenting when someone's got a meme that like baking soda will cure cancer or something like that? I'm like, <sighs> yeah, things like that, things poorly researched journalism and things like that, and that includes mainstream opinion based journalism, are a problem. So that is absolutely a thing. That's good. So, that was addressed. Yeah. Yeah, no. So, yeah, no. Is fake news a thing? Absolutely. So, yes, there are things like that. Is Pizzagate fake news? I haven't seen anyone investigate it well. So, you know, basically, it is a whole f internet freakout based on someone saying this equals this in code. Like, yeah, that's pretty fake to me. So, until someone gets a little bit better, I'm not, I'm not going in for that. So, so yes, fake news is the thing. It's particularly rampant in the health field on both sides of that. Like the natural health people are... are You're all everything. Yeah, 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 no. It's like, you know, Jesus Christ. Like, Jesus Christ. And um, the people who are in favor of the very conventional medicine are also doing the same thing. Like, I am kind of yeah. writing a post right now on homeopathy and fake news and with some specific examples. So, um, and, you know, because it's me and because I can dive into that and I know the homeopathy research really well, I can actually, like, nitpick it. And it's like, this is fake in this precise way kind of thing. So I wanted to get back to, like, we we're yeah. talking about the techniques and just how there's so much division with people doing the old freedom teachings and and the new effies and people just making yeah. their stands with this stuff. And that's like, that's kind of like my focus with newcomers group. I've made that very clear anybody who's joining this has to be uh -huh. trying to consciously integrate both you know looking at both and th this is an integration focus group you know like yeah. a think tank of, of where is this like where does this all this connect really the inner domain external and stuff what are we doing 
Well, but I wanted to link it back just real quick. I wanted to link it back to the, the histories, like just the classic disagreements, you know, with the guardians and these different councils, like even mm -hmm. in Voyagers that you brought up before in, in mm -hmm. one of our talks about, you know, like they haven't agreed, they haven't fully agreed on things in the past. That's yeah. been clear, you know, it's been presented to us in our history. Maybe there's yeah. some, yeah. there's things that are being outpictured again now, like history repeats itself, you know? Well, and that's the thing is, you know, I do, like, I remember it was said um, during the uh, April 2013 workshop that it was unanimous. Every Guardian Alliance and MCEO person went and supported the Alhambra. Talking with Nose and Roll, I do not see them as antichristic or fatally in any way. Like, I've never seen any evidence of that. I've never seen any em energetic imprint of that. They're not down with them. I don't think it was unanimous. Kind of oh. misrepresentation, I guess, happening. Yeah. Oh. So that oh. being said, what if there really are multiple ways of being Christic? What if there are multiple understandings? What if there are multiple cultural perspectives on this? And that the one that I or you or anyone else has isn't the only one. And that the idea of condemning anyone who's thinking differently than you as a fatally is fucking stupid. And also kind of a, a trait of a, a fall person or at least a partially fallen trait itself that hasn't yet been integrated what if and i say what if i think that's true so i think it's being defined you know right now also maybe redefined and defined and the word that i think in summary too that they used and i, I don't know it exactly but i think it was unity within diversity and i got into a fight with rory about this i like rory, rory. it's unity within diversity it is diverse i mean what's the key thing there diverse people cooperating together not unity within monoculture like that is not the theme that is not the idea that is a terrible idea and every time we've tried to do it in human history and anyone's tried to do it in the galaxy that i remember it just doesn't fucking work because it's a terrible idea so we should not be the latest in a long string of failures to try that i've been very ranty today and i'm sorry where where does sinocracy fit in all this that's been coming up a lot like with, mm -hmm. well with james james is kind of bringing that back in his group the awake aware group and i've emphasized oh, that also him. oh good for me. i do like you you know i've always had a fun despite our disagreements i've always had a fondness for james he's lovely um when tia's not around um but what are your thoughts on sinocracy so much that's the, let's get out of the personal drama um um sinocracy it's a lovely idea it's kind of like perfect democracy. It's something that we just keep getting closer to. We treat making steps towards, but always seems to take a step back. It's like one of those, it's almost ephemeral. Haha, <laughs> Effie, ephemeral. Um, it's almost ephemeral. It's kind of like something you just, it's an ideal that you keep striving towards. In our world, we have democracy. That's perhaps getting quite close. Not perfect, far from perfect. As we continue to refine that and continue to perfect that, we may get ever closer to it. Who knows what the government in the future is going to look like? Maybe we'll all be telepathically linked in together, and ever and someone will have a, like a governmental question. We'll all be like, "Oh, oh, what do I think about that?" And then we'll all make a collective decision together. I don't know. So that is how that works. I feel the ideal of synocracy. I take steps towards it, not always perfect, sometimes backwards, sometimes forwards, but it's there. It is an ideal at this moment, and it's something to embody and to work towards bringing into physical realization on Earth. I think so. I, I mean, I've felt it and experienced it with people. Like we can get along. It is possible. <laughs> yes. I mean, God, I don't get along with tons of people, but... That doesn't mean I'm going to set out and you'll know, burn their villages and destroy their lives and whatever. I mean, not getting along with somebody does not mean you can't coexist with them and just like, you know, exist in the same world together. Like, you know, yeah. You wanted to get back to compatibility of the different bodies of work or did you already cover that? I think, I think Chris, there is not much of a conclusion to that. There are different bodies of work. Different people are not attracted to them for various reasons. I'm reminded of, you remember Christina Ray Martinez and she would talk about how she, you know, had all of her experiences and so forth. 
and that uh, after some of the more negative experiences like wormhole jumping and so forth that she was in, she would do Christic techniques and they would physically hurt her. It's interesting. There may be an element, and not to imply anything about anyone, there may be an element of personal um, of personal compatibility with various energies in, in that. That may be part of the solution. There is no firm solution on that just yet. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that. I am open to other people telling me that, as I'm sure I'm going to hear after this interview. God basically called a good chunk of the of the chaos shields semi or christic racist so i'm sure i'm gonna get so much flack from this we had like seven viewers and four dropped off we got three now <laughs> oh that's <laughs> maybe that sets up and already <laughs> that's good well these things are these things um like posted afterwards i posted it on the group i posted it on my wall and just like are they uh, like said live they are they like videos uh, though afterwards yeah. like after yeah yeah this will be a, a regular video i could like okay. Make I think it into I've, production. This is that's remember how I called myself, you know, bitch queen and and shit disturber, you know, supreme of this of like you know whatever shit like that is, or bitch what is it no bitch princess and shit disturber of you know whatever shield. I'm 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 doing some shit disturbing today. This is I'm gonna get some flack. Leave it in there. That's fine. Just keep it transparent. <laughs> uh, one thing I do is I do have transparent my flaws. You have what? I'm transparent with my flaws. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's good. Anyway, let's get balance. Chris, I need to go to bed. Yeah. So, and this is a good place, I think, to end the interview. Thank you okay. so much for talking with me. We finally got it together and made it work. Yeah, definitely. I'm gonna stop the stream. I'd like to talk to you afterwards. But thanks for sharing. Sure. Thanks for coming on. It's good. Good to have just candid talks like this. I like this vibe. Just I want to well, have the that. Thing. One thing I'm really good at is being genuine, and yeah, no, I can t like you know people want candidate, can uh, what is what is cand candid diet? <laughs> candid diet. <laughs> they want Candida. candid. <laughs> so they want that day that you know you will get a whole lot of it from me, girl. So you know that's kind of my thing. Is I'm apparently Kim. I love my my homeopathic teacher told me was, I was like the most genuine person she knew, and I'm like oh thank you, Kim. And holy crap, I am. Wow. So, you know, yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good and much needed, too. All right, we'll go ahead and end it right there. Mm -hmm.